before I say anything else, let's just check this out. Alright, and so you can see that I sent and it recorded what I sent, it demodulated it and sent it. So I'm going to turn this off now because it's transmitting CW, it's constantly transmitting. Alright, so uh, the if you're familiar with the Quensheng, you know that there are many different firmwares available. This is an incredibly good implementation of a CW for this. I like the way they did paddle mode. You could do straight key using the PTT or the menu button, but you know, once you get into paddle, you never stop. And so I've learned to treat this sort of as a paddle. I'm getting used to it. It works really, really well. I'm impressed. There's a lot going on with this radio. They have APRS. They have a few other digital modes. CW is in here. I'll dive into those one at a time, I think. But this is just for those of you who aren't aware of this. I recently posted a video about CW. Um, but not Morse code. Of course, this will decode Morse code, but you don't have to use Morse code. If you saw my video on T9, you could send a message simply uh, the same. It won't decode it correctly, but I can send you a message, and my message could be... I'm sorry, let me try that again. So that would be high, H-I. Uh, using uh, T9 method in my previous video. And you'll notice it didn't decode that because it didn't recognize those as Morse, and that's fine. Um, if the developer would like to put T9 in there, hey, buddy, I really appreciate that. Check out my video. That'd be awesome. Um, excellent, excellent implementation. There have been other firmware updates for the Quensheng. I've had this thing for a while, and I've always sort of knocked it as kind of a novelty. Ooh, let me get out of transmit mode. Sort of knocked it as a novelty, because the early firmware updates had things like RSSI meters and S meters and even a spectrum scope, but a novelty, really. None of that was going to make me use this radio over my, uh, my new Bofeng 17R. However, uh, wow, I'm blown away by this. I'm going to use it. I'm going to teach my wife Morse code with this. We're going to practice with it. Now, if you're familiar with the Quensheng, you're probably familiar with software update or firmware updates and how they work. I'm, I'm going to just quickly show this so you, you can do the rest of the research to figure it out because it's really something you'll have to get used to. I haven't seen one video that's really good at teaching exactly how it's done. And, and I think the reason is, not to fault anyone making videos, these firmware updates come and go so fast that if somebody were to make a comprehensive video today, on exactly how I got this going, a week from now it's going to be irrelevant. The firmware is going to upgrade to a better firmware. This particular developer is really banging out firmware fast. One of the disadvantages though is this developer is so knee deep into doing this and is developing so much so fast, their documentation isn't very good. Really hard sometimes to figure out what how things work. Sometimes it's not documented um, and certainly they're not putting sort of step-by-step -step instructions and things like that. And I think that's because, you know, developers get tunnel vision and just go. And so the last thing they're interested in with an open project is um, documentation for the public. Um, until the ve developer feels like he's done, um, it'll be a little bit tricky to figure out how these things work, especially as he keeps updating it. I'm going to show you just where I'm getting this information from. There's two major things you've got to know about firmware updates. The first one is this software version is UVK5V0.3D. Um, and if you were to Google that, it will come up. Here's its uh, GitHub page information. Uh, this will give you, you'll be able to find it. You'll be able to get to the firmware. Uh, the other thing you'll need to know is how to get it on there. There's lots of ways to update firmware, but the easiest way is to go to uh, GitHub and go to UVMod or Google UVMod. And down here where you would uh, update the firmware, you're just going to save that downloaded file and you're going to browse for the file you downloaded hit patch firmware and when that's done you can flash directly to your radio. Of course you need the data cable for that but it's the same data cable for all Balfung, current Balfung radios um, that, are, that are compatible with Windows so a newer data cable uh, would work just fine. So that's sort of the basics you can kind of root around for that. 
I'm sure I'm gonna make more videos about this. I mean, how cool is that? This also does APRS. You can send APRS messages that are pre-programmed. Um, and, and, and there's a couple other uh, digital modes in here. I can't offhand remember what they are, but I guess I'll be delving into those. If you'd like me to go into more detail about this and make like a really comprehensive video from turning on your computer to getting the radio into this condition, send me an email, kb3hxa at gmail, and if enough, if enough people are interested in that, I will, I'll certainly do that for you. Um, but I think the information I gave is, you probably know how this stuff works. I mean, this is, this is good stuff. So whether you're a hardcore amateur radio and you want to do some CW on a handheld, or you're a prepper who is just going to be using the T9 method, you can do both with this. T9 is fun with this, by the way, because just like the paddle uh, from Morse code, you have the uh, menu and the PTT, one of them does the long dash, one of them does the short dash. So uh, T9 is really elegant. You can really hear it, uh, as opposed to the crappy video I made with a straight key method the other day. But um, either way, be aware of it. $25 radio that can do CW by itself, plus a million other things. I'm doing a 180 here. I like this radio. I didn't before. I am going to upload a video about, um, there's two versions of this, and although the screen looks blue right now on, on the camera, it's white, stark white. It's blindingly white. Uh, and then they came out with a second version of the Quensheng that has an orange black, black uh, yeah, orange backlight. Uh, it's really easy to change the color of these in a really low-tech way, and so I'm going to do a video on how to change your screen color uh, without having to do any electronic modifications to whatever color you want. I'm going to try a different, couple different ones. Because the one thing that bothers me about this radio over everything else is that stark white screen. It's a bit much, especially if you wear glasses or contacts. It's, gl it's glaring. Um, and so I'm going to be showing you how to put a color filter in there to make it, make it a different color and a little bit easier on the eyes. So, uh, a relatively short video for my ramblings, but uh, yeah, very cool. If you're into Morse code or you're exploring that new T9 method that I introduced, uh, try it out. If you don't have this radio, get it. Just get it. $25. Come on, you can't eat at McDonald's for that much. So consider this your happy meal toy, all right? So uh, with that, uh, like I said, not a planned video. I'm going to jump out of here and start working on my next video in the next couple of days. But uh, for now, I'm going to say 7-3 and enjoy.